Hello, my class. So today we're going to talk about a motivation concept called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. If you're in business at all, or if you find yourself working in sports, this is something you're going to see pop up again and again. The hierarchy of needs is the way Maslow attempted to explain what motivates someone to behave the way that they do. Maslow thought that we were all motivated to perform behaviors based on how much we needed that thing. So, Abraham Maslow was a humanistic psychologist. And humanistic psychology is a holistic approach based on the assumption that all people are inherently good and are striving to be better. So, through this humanistic lens, Maslow developed what he called a hierarchy of needs. And it really explains all the things that we can do that motivate us to do behaviors as humans. It looks like a pyramid and it's divided into levels based on how much we're motivated to find that thing and how complex that need is. For instance, the base of the pyramid is called the physiological level. And this is all the stuff that we physically need to keep us alive. So like food and water and air, stuff that we can't survive without, the most basic needs that you have. The next level up is a security level. And these are things that most of us would prefer to have and most people are motivated to find. They're also slightly more complex than that physiological level. The security level is just what it sounds like. Things that keep us safe and secure and prepared for the future. Examples would be things like having a really safe, secure job or a safe place to sleep every night. The next level up is the social level. And again, this level is even more complex than the last. Maintaining social relationships is really complicated. Think of all the social relationships that you maintain every day. You might be somebody's child or somebody's parent or somebody's sibling. Maybe you're a member of a specific friend group or a sports team or a book club. We all play many different social roles throughout the course of an average day. And this need to belong is what defines Maslow's social level. The next level up is even more complex. It's called the esteem level, and it's your need for things like appreciation, uh, recognition, respect. When we don't get recognized for our accomplishments, you can experience a lack of self-esteem and a lack of confidence. The last level and the very peak of the pyramid is called self-actualization. And this is the most complex level and what humanistic psychologists like Maslow believe everyone is working towards. This level holds things like inner fulfillment, so maximizing your full potential as a human being. Now, when Maslow very first presented his hierarchy, it was back in the early 1940s, and it caught on very, very fast. I mean, it's pretty intuitive, it's really logical, and this idea that you can level up and produce a better, more fulfilled human is pretty seductive. And a lot of different fields, like business, um, began incorporating what Maslow presented as a quick and easy way to fix problems. But there are a few really big criticisms of the hierarchy of needs. The first criticism is that being a person is messy. According to Maslow, one level of the pyramid has to be completely fulfilled before you can move on to the next. So say you need to have fulfilled the security level before moving on to the social level which doesn't make a lot of sense because we all know that you can have a very full social life and have a really crappy, insecure job. In fact, really for ancient humans, having these social bonds was probably critical for doing things on the physiological level, like setting up hunting excursions and getting food. So these levels really collapse in on each other pretty quickly when viewed this way. The second criticism is that the hierarchy is heavily culturally biased. Maslow was born in Brooklyn to parents who had recently immigrated from Ukraine. He went to City College in New York and then on to Columbia University. So he definitely viewed things from a Euro-American perspective. He overlooked any kind of collectivist culture where social bonds are far more important 
and would have completely rearranged the levels of his pyramid. The third big criticism is that the hierarchy relies really heavily on this kind of quasi-religious, not really well-defined concept, that peak of the pyramid, self-actualization. Like all humanistic psychologists, Maslow was working under the assumption that all humans are good, and that not only are all humans good, but that all humans want to be even better. The fourth, last, and probably biggest criticism of Maslow is that since he first published the hierarchy, there hasn't been any scientific support to back it up. If you're interested in reading more about the ways the hierarchy has been disproved, I highly recommend the academic papers of Mahmoud Waba and Lawrence Bridwell, who have done factor analytic studies and cross-sectional studies and longitudinal studies and still can't find anything to support Maslow's idea that some needs are more important than others. So thanks for watching. Make sure you click that subscribe button for all of our latest videos on Psy vs. Psy, and I'll see y'all later. Bye. I think it's a pyramid scheme.